y bienvenidas a este sexto webinar. Welcome to this sixth webinar, Kick Slack, in Gender Equality Perspective in Public Education in Central America and the Caribbean under the Framework of Practices Community on Perspectives of Gender Equality. We take this opportunity to thank all the participants for joining us and we'll wait for a couple of minutes before starting. Thank you very much. Nuevamente damos la bienvenida a todos y todas las y los eh, asistentes. Once more, we thank all the attendees, participants. Some technical indications to start this webinar. We like to start that the logic of strengthening in Latin America and the Caribbean, and also from other regions. Then, for the people joining us at the Zoom platform, this will have simultaneous interpretation in Spanish, French, and English. Then you're kindly invited to select the interpretation channel located at the taskbar so that you can choose your desired channel. I would also like to remind you that this seminar will be recorded then welcome you all as i say to the six years when their gender perspective initiatives in education in latin america and the caribbean developed under the context of our practice practice community on public education i would like to briefly mention that when we end this seminar you will you are invited to continue staying with us to participate in a workshop while we deepen the initiatives exposed today. This workshop will be a working oriented space where you are invited to reflect upon the initiatives presented on the design and the implementation with gender equality initiatives in education. Once more, we thank all the speakers, the participants who have kindly accepted this invitation. So today we are pleased to invite to listen to presentations. The first one is Lizarazgo. And the second one, Sabina Lipo from the On Continue Association. Without further ado, I would like to start introducing Nelsi. Nelsi is from Colombia. It's Colombian and Equatorian. She has been trained in philosophy and letters and a postgraduate in international relations. Her professional work has been developed in the fields of communic alternative communication and popular education. Professor, consultant to for different organs, particularly in human rights, mobility, and gender. She's currently general coordinator of the Latin American campaign for the right to education. Today, she will present improving violence-based, gender-based violence. Thank you very much, Leslie. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Maciel. Thank you very much to the colleagues by, from Stuma for all the efforts you're making to build exchange knowledge among different experiences and places we are all located. Thank you very much to everyone here, those who have taken the time to join us. And of course, I'd like to thank this team, this important team of the national coalitions, the CLADE from CLADE participating in this process and the regional Cladi office. And of course, the alternative colleagues, our ally, 
in this project because the process we've been doing is such a well it's that learning is such a tremendous learning space that's what it really is human learning theoretical learning experiential learning which i believe is changing the life of many that was my starting point before sharing my screen i have tried to literally answer the questions asked so i don't go around the bushes i'm saying i'm an expert in so i would like to refer to the focus of this presentation and let me start sharing my screen can you see it yes okay yeah we see it perfectly very good our process our project i don't like calling it project because we leave it as a process rather than a project it's called the strategies to prevent sexual and gender violence and promote equity in rural schools we work in three countries haiti honduras and nicaragua in each of these uh, countries in two rural communities in with some educational communities in each of those territories the first question we were asked is how has the implementation of this initiative been like and we have summarized this in this chart we have supported and sustained this whole process in four key elements learning communities participatory action research, national research groups, and of course, gender focus or gender approach. So close to these components, approaches, perspective strategies, there are some personal places of each of the team members from which we have tried and continue trying to advance in each of these strategies. And those places, on one hand, make us trust in ourselves and deal with them to recognize ourselves in, to train in the process to reflect upon, to unlearn, observe and read and return to learn in order to create new knowledge. I believe that this somehow synthesizes how we have implemented this initiative beyond the elements strictly technical or even political to implement this initiative. Who are the participating actors? That was the second question. So we have mentioned them here as a synthesis. Obviously, we participate as an organization, the CLADE as a regional organization, alternatives as an allied, an expert allied in gender from Canada, the Para, the Para Todos Education Network from Honduras and the Nicaragua coalition for education they are the institutional supporters and we all sustain this process and the three groups protagonists of all these path are the national research groups operating from the beginning of the project the educational communities and their territorial communities. Let's say the communities where these educational communities are located with a very relevant role within this process. 
recovering this place of the school as part of the community, no as an annex to community, a space unrelated to community life, but on the contrary, as part of the community reality, presenting us challenges in relation to gender violence. And of course, the regional team of consultants and technical and technicians helping us day by day in the local and national process. They are the key actors, the protagonists of the process we have been implementing. Third question. Who facilitates us and what obstacles have you found in the implementation? Okay, synthesizing this is easier than I previously said, because there are plenty of actors and I have to prioritize them. Of course, you will find facilitators and obstacles. Then this is the synthesis I like to share with you. As facilitators, the tracking and trust in each national coalition, the deed, the profound professional linkage or bond we have established with the national teams enabling horizontal clear, direct dialogues, precise and timely accompaniments. And besides having high level teams working with us, methodologic rigorosity and capacity strengthening. These all have been a long path, as you can see. Our bet is on participatory action. And if you want to be consistent, this is a pretty demand action pretty demanding for dialogue for hearing capacity collective building capacity recognize recognition of knowledge validation of that knowledge so we have taken care of the methodological approach not to betray the methodological approach we have defined we are aware it is difficult to facilitate this, but we haven't done that because we are betting on that approach as a key for a trans real transformation in educational communities. The other great facilitator are the alliances with the social organizations of women. And of course, with the educational community actors, and in some cases with the local entities of the government, mayors, well, authorities, as I said, local authorities in some cases. I have highlighted the alliances with social organizations of long-standing trajectory in those communities and territories, and particularly with the female organized collectives in co organizing those territories as the process moves on, they have taken a more protagonist role in order to activate appropriate of the methodology and mobilize the work in the educational communities and they afford replicating it in the territory to the family spaces, community spaces and so on. Those are the great facilitators. And obviously there are some obstacles and we have identified clearly this fourth, obviously the conditions imposed by the pandemic to work in the field or institute to work, they forced us to invent participatory mechanisms without being in the field during the first two months of the project. That was a huge challenge. And then the national context, context particularly as you well know, well, they are not easy context due to different reasons. And that has meant a challenge. The diverse degrees of what we call gender sensitive, sensibility, sensitivity. It's not the same level of sensitivity when it comes to gender, to openness for gender, to how difficult it is to introduce the topic among the very diverse actors 
from the communities and particularly from our own national teams with whom we have done a tremendous work in that sense. And as a consequence of COVID, return time for students to education communities at the beginning of the project, we didn't have open schools. And that, of course, represented a difficulty. And assumed methodological, methodological adaptations during the first stage of the process. And the last episode of chapter, how many minutes do I have left? Okay, we're pretty good in time. Very good. So everything is flowing perfectly. Well, the last chapter, as I said, is about learning. And here we have identified learning, prioritizing them by actors. Then what had we learned? We have learned a great deal with the rural educational communities by recognizing their local capacities and creating bonds with community community leaders, social organizations, generalized to educational right, educational authorities, teachers and students. This possibility to densify and help in the spreadings of community weaving as well as bones, which finally end up being a guarantee for sustainability in the cultural process we are betting on. Because we know that when we work with gender, what we are betting on is a profound cultural change for coexistence patterns, the way you look at the other hierarchies and subordinations, which we need to break. Then this weaving strengthening seems substantial and we have learned a lot from these organizations and communities with each local team and their beds and contexts. I would dare say that what we have learned most among all is the necessary flexibility demanded by this type of processes. That is, we all know that we have gone through very complex times due to pandemic as well as social situation or political situation, even safety issues. And we have also have to, to replan, reinvent new tools, new mechanisms to contact with the people by adapting ourselves to the context, everything we do. And that seems a uh, learning that will remain in everyone's bodies involved in this process and somehow it will mobilize options, life options, because this is what we believe. Gender matters, makes you make decisions on what you want to change, how you want to change it and why you want to change it and towards where you want to change it. With the generation or participatory action and traditional. There's something very important here, which is almost an obligation in the research participatory action approach is that you need to take the time to build with others the methodological tools, to review them with others, to validate them with your peers, to reformulate them with your peers, and above all, to make them pertinent to the possibilities of each one. In this case, each of the com educational communities where we were advancing the process. With the collective and community interpretation strategies in the data by gender approach, that's the stage we are in now. We are returning to the educational communities to read and interpret with a critic view, the data we have created in the exploratory phase and the qualitative and quantitative exploratory phase. This is a highly relevant moment because this is the moment where communities themselves interpret what they have said, the data they have generated. And this means where are the factors playing a role, for example, in the violences 
identified by the different educational community actors. And beyond that, what's the prevention strategy then? The one that's most adapted to us, the one we can't move on, the one that will change this reality we have identified and now can understand. Not justify, but understand. Why do we have to go through what's happening? What we will do jointly? What we will do together? That's a very important moment in this process and the one we will have in the coming months. With an, I'm sorry, solid empiric, empirical data. This also has been important because in this Yamble for participatory research action, action research, then it is important to have empirical data and evidence-based data. And through that, and try to process them rigorously and share that knowledge with the communities and having data feeding incidence strategies on the political aspect we will take on a regional level and i have finished my presentation i hope it has been clear i try to be very precise with questions and answers. And we have tried to evidence what we needed for this thing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You were very precise in time and also very interesting what you were, how you were answering the questions. I'm going to take away a lot of things, but in respect with the time and thinking of what you were saying about the components and thinking of the trust and creating the bond in the horizontal dialogue. I think they are highly relevant elements in every area. This is the way knowledge should work. And particularly when we refer to gender and generating these alliances with the organizations, with female organizations as well. And what then you returning to the community with the data and is the community interpreting the data to generate strategies for prevention is a fundamental information and it will be important to analyze it deeper because i believe that if it comes from the community knowledge comes from there that's where it really works so thank you very much for your presentation i would also like to thank all the participants attendees here with us remind you that we will have a workshop and we'll have a more intimate space where we'll be able to introduce ourselves and getting to know each other. In respect of the time, I will go for the second speaker with us. She's Salvina Lisbo, co-founder of the On Continuum Association. Sabina is charged with designing different projects for the training of teachers of French as a foreign language in the Caribbean. She has also collaborated with the Francophony and she has been a promoter of the gender equality. What moves her to work with this subject in the region? She will present promoting gender equality at school. Sabina, welcome. Thank you very much. And the floor is yours. Bonjour, bonjour à tous. Good morning, everyone. I will share my screen. You can see my screen, right? So first of all, thank you very much. Thank you for this invitation. It is a great pleasure for me to be here because this project I will tell you about it is at its third stage. We're just beginning. We're starting to work on it. We have done all of the preparation, let's say in that way. And we're uh, pleased to cooperate with KICS 
at Kicks with this project. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Our project, it is called Promoting Gender Equality in Schools. And I will explain the way we're working on it. What we have been doing in order to start this project. Together, we will see the identification of problems, the conception of the project, and later we'll come back to our experience and what it motivated us to create this project. So first of all, a brief introduction of our association. We're an association placed in Martinica. We have worked in the Caribbean countries, especially in Santa Lucia, Saint Lucia, in cooperation with other countries in Caribe, French speaking countries. So we have an experience on site. We have worked with teachers at the ministries of education for the training of teachers of French. Besides all that, we also develop many different international projects and different topics related to equality. And we have also worked uh, with this plurilanguage literature. We have also worked in environment and sustainable development projects. So, what have we done to identify this problem? There are many stages in this road, in this path of identification. First of all, we have a training that we have done with LIFER, the Training Institute, French. It is one part of the bigger institution we work together. And I am currently a tutor for the training and therefore I have been aware of how important it is gender equality, especially at schools. The concept of this hidden curriculum, the role of teachers, uh, when talking about equality, the struggle against stereotypes, sexism, and so on. So that was done last year in July 2021. So after this training, I also analyzed data in the Caribbean. It is not easy to have reliable data and recent data in the Caribbean. So we'll come back on that topic later. And we have also taken or have known about this KICS project. And we have shown the desire of making a proposal working uh, at our level in order to have a real impact in teachers and also in students. And at the very end, we were selected. And therefore, we are in this initial stage of the project. We're having this conversation and debate with local stakeholders and so on. The documents that we have used and the resources, we have found plenty of reports, for instance, this report that was mentioned at the beginning of this list. It is a report by the St. Lucia government administration and also some reports at a wider scale. For instance, a report by the World Bank about closing gender gaps in Latin America and the Caribbean or about women in business and management, which is more centered in work and another UNESCO report related to global education monitoring report related to education. And there's another World Bank document that gives us some view of the situation and I have used these documents in order to have and in order to know and to have information about uh, the, this topic we're going to work on. This led me to some situations in the Caribbean. Different from some other countries in the world, women have good results here. That is something positive. Girls have 
better results, performance at school, and they get more certificates, diplomas. So this may lead us to think that everything is okay in the Caribbean, but inequality occur afterwards in the job market. Women there are only 27% of the company managers in the Caribbean. If we consider this at a global scale, that is positive because at a global level, the same participation at the same level, it is only 5%. And women, you should have uh, little representation at a political level. And that happens in a, at a global level, and we can also see it in the Caribbean. But this school success does not translate into the work environment. Therefore, we need to promote, I mean, for women, for girls, to address some other type of courses, careers. Nowadays, they are more guided towards jobs related to healthcare. They usually work as assistants uh, in schools, but there, there aren't really many entrepreneurship amongst women. <clears throat> They're not working in science, informatics, for instance. Another example, if we talk about women at the parliament, the problem in the Caribbean is that the situations are very so much. For instance, they have Grenada, almost with a party in the parliament, but St. Lucia and Antigua, Barbuda are really far away to this parity. So it is hard to talk about in general terms, but if we do, if we get an average, we still have work to do. From these conclusions, we have also, we are also willing to build a project with many different goals. The first one was working with teachers because that's where we have more experience. We have we have worked with teachers in the Caribbean for quite a long time. So teachers get this gender equality perspective and they included that it into their curriculum, this hidden curriculum as well. They have to value these feminine models, these feminine roles, female roles. And in that way, they should build strategies in order to promote equality between men and women. We also want to promote, I mean, girls to choose different type of jobs. So we can motivate them to choose different jobs. I mean, they should work in science, to, for them to be entrepreneurs. So they're more independent and they're more economic, in the, economically independent. We want to invite local stakeholders. So, I mean, for this project, not to be to be on just one or to, to go in just one direction. We don't want to be an institution coming into a country and then living. We want to involve the local stakeholders so later they can all continue with the project. So they keep on acting and working with schools and even without our presence, without them needing uh, from our help. So that will allow to create some relationships, connections between students, local shareholders, associations, and amongst schools, teachers, so they can continue reinforcing their connections, their relations. And we also had a fourth goal of promoting social justice. That was part of the project as well. And we decided to concentrate in schools, rural schools with fewer opportunities, in the Caribbean, the system, it is a, a little bit different if we compare it with France. In France, there, there's no much of a classification of school. So people choose the school according to the place where they live. In the Caribbean, it is different. There are schools which have better, a better classification, better standard, better, where students get the better marks and there are some others where the situation is harder where they don't have uh, as many possibilities as others. So with this project, we wanted to concentrate in schools which are not in the capital cities, which were in, let's say, more remote areas where students have 
less opportunities to access to higher education, for instance. So these were the four pillars, priority, priority pillars of our project. And these are the activities that we have foreseen. In order to implement the project, we're going to start with an online training for teachers, teachers of French as a foreign language. And that is going to start, and it's going to include the creation of some pedagogical resources. We have also planned a guideline multilingual guideline, which is going to cover this online elements. And we're going to have this digital also on paper format. With that, we'll work with social justice at a teacher's level, because there are some teachers who do not have electricity available all day long. Uh, uh, Dominica, Dominica was uh, struck by a hurricane, so they don't have electricity all day long and it is hard for them to connect in order to follow this training course. They will always have guidelines, printed guidelines, and that will allow us to include more teachers. And also, we will also have uh, teachers working in their mother tongue in French or also in Spanish. We also work with Saint Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada. And this will allow us to be present in some islands where they speak Spanish. And we also want to implement some workshops in some pilot schools. They're going to be led by some local personalities. The goal of these workshops it is teaching young people and also especially girls for them to uh, access to different types of jobs. So we have chosen personalities, famous people that already work in these fields. And therefore, they work for the inclusion of girls, autonomy of girls and women in those countries. Or sometimes we choose people who work in non-conventional uh, fields for women, for instance, these are some of the stakeholders which are going to participate in the project. We're going to work with an officer's curriculum in these four islands where the project is going to be carried out. We're going to work with teachers associations, French teachers associations, in order to identify the schools which which are the most important ones because we don't really know all of the schools in the four countries. So we have asked them which would be the most interesting school for this project. And I asked them if they could help me to identify some uh, local people who could also be interesting for this project. And for these people, we have Joe Lavis in St. Lucia, uh, working with virtual reality with students. This may show girls that it is possible to be a woman and also developing and working in the technology field. We also have Soka Gyal in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, working with the empowerment of women. Uh, so women can start some entrepreneurship and we also have Lira Fabian for Dominica. And she speaks, she, I mean, gives lectures for girls to motivate them and also promoting some careers or courses which are not so conventional. And in the Granada, we are also working with this officer curriculum, which is identifying uh, persons. The calendar, the timeline that we have, we're at the initial stage of the project. I cannot tell you much about the results, about the actions that we have developed, but this is the timeline, provisional planning. We are uh, wording the guideline. We're writing it. In February, March, we're going to have some workshops in schools. And 
we will have some training, which is going to start in January. So in our experience, we are working, having as a base our former experiences, especially for the online training. We have done many courses, online courses, so we have more experience on that. We also have experience in the cooperation with different countries in terms of management of international projects. We have also cooperated with 10 countries, uh, training teachers, and working with this DAF examination in high school. We have also, we have experience of accompaniment. We have accompanied more than 350 teachers. And we have, we also have some experience in the conception of pedagogical, creation of pedagogical researches. I write some pedagogical files, reports, we design, we work with designers and pedagogical teams. And thanks to all of this, we have an idea of the difficulties, potential difficulties of this project. For instance, in the cooperation with ministries and moving teachers, I mean, that may one of the biggest problems because ministries always have many things to do. Teachers also have many, plenty of things, of things to do. So we have seen that there's an overload of work for teachers. And sometimes they have little motivation. Sometimes it is hard to move them. And in our project, we have chosen and we have decided to concentrate in 10 teachers per country. We're going to have a small number, but we want to make sure that they're going to be motivated to follow our training. And then later, the duration of this training and this workload that needs to be adapted to all of the participants. Sometimes it is hard for teachers to follow an online training in their free time. They have their own families, they have work to do, and we need, we need to adapt the training for it not to be an overload, not to overwhelm teachers. Thirdly, the management of the training platform and the way of using it by the participant. So they can also use the different tools, technological tools, available in the platform. We need to work on that for it to be easy to understand, friendly. Fourth point, interactivity of contents and follow-up of the participants. When we do some online training, it is fundamental, essential to have a good follow-up. Without that, participants may get lost. They may lose motivation. And finally, we are having interventions in different schools that is a little bit more related to administrative elements. We need to have the agreement from uh, directors of schools, from the ministry as well. So therefore, we have some difficulties there and we have included all of these potential difficulties. So those are the difficulties that we have uh, foreseen and in order to finish, we think in this project as a first, I mean, we're working on a first stage and we want to continue with it. We'd like to have the translation of it so more teachers and more countries can also work with it in different countries. So they have a second alternative of training. We should also work with more schools for each of the workshops. So once the first workshops have been or have started, teachers, may have had these uh, gatherings with some local authorities. So in this was going to be easier to promote these workshops in some other places or some other cities. So it is possible. We can apply this in different countries. We can even create some networks at the Caribbean scale where there are many things that may be started. So I believe that we're going to go to the Q&A session, right? Thank you very much. It was a really interesting presentation. So now we're going to go to a Q&A session. If you have questions, observations, or comments, we're going to give the floor to all of the participants. Sabrina, thank you very much for this it's been really interesting. There are some challenges. Motivation of teachers. 
this uh, work load that may be excessive, the fatigue that may be related to this virtuality. So there's a huge challenge over there. And the other big challenge is this work with the ministries, with authorities in each of the countries. They should be able to understand what is being done, the importance of this gender training for teachers, and there should be any misinterpretation. The decontraction, it is important. We need to have this decontraction and we need to inform and train in relation to gender. So now we'll give the floor. Herman and Winnie had some comments there in the chat. I don't know if you'd like to, to take the floor, Winnie, you have a question over there? Good morning, thank you. Well, I was listening to the presentation. It's been quite interesting. And uh, you mentioned how huh, all of the schools and countries you have worked with and this accompaniment that was provided to teachers. So my question is, I don't know, it would be interesting to know the type of inputs you have received from each of the countries or the people you have worked with and how this has contributed, how this has contributed to the transformation, adaptation of the material methodologies, what initial ideas you had in the project and how these have been transformed from the context and the contributions of the people who are participating in the project itself. Thank you, Winnie. So Nelson, Sabrina, would like to answer Winnie's comment. Nancy, maybe we'll start with you. I am not quite sure whether Winnie would like to ask me or Sabrina. What are you interested in answering? And I mean in asking. Each one of you, it is to you. To you is the question, yes. I'm sorry. You mentioned was the last speaker yeah uh, i thought so due to the type of question no everything is fine well with the uh, mix of languages sometimes it's confusing then the question i would like to see if you can tell me the type of contribution you have from the territories you have worked which have included, well, the knowledge you recognize as transformative for your methodological process. Uh, okay. okay, let me deactivate the language. Well, I, will, I lived for two years and a half in Santa Lucia, so that knowledge allowed me to confirm some things directly from first hand when I was living in the country. Then when we call, when, when this collaboration with the ministries, you collaborate in the arrangements of the and the preparation there with this project i presented them the ideas and the activities regarding the planning and we saw that jointly where it was feasible on the side of teachers training what was i mean which was most interesting for them but they didn't really modify some of the things they accepted the work and they stated it was very interesting and it was perfect for their country and it was going to help the teachers. And on the level of methodology, then it means that they didn't want to modify some of the things for that part of the project, for the training. At the same time, they enroll at the same time of teachers to precisely help from the ministry to teachers 
to manage the workload in a better way and have a better return. Then we had the benefit of this return in a different way the ministries had. And that was uh, reflected on the content. Probably they had a big lot of work, but generally speaking, the feedback, this return was highly positive. That is, from the ministries, there was no a great modification by them to our planning. However, regarding the teachers association or teachers college, who provided us with the knowledge in field, because we didn't have the specific knowledge for each of those, then they indicated as, for example, that some of the concerts were not well adapted. People from the ministry told us, uh, be careful if you will talk about reproductive rights or gender or transsexuals in general. So there was a point on the worst a kind of reluctancy by the ministries regarding the planning. They were scared of having the feedback by parents for training. It was a training for teachers, not for students. Then we collected, we noticed some apprehensions because they told us we were in the Caribbean countries and there were certain or some apprehensions that needed to be considered. For example, reproduction rights that requires to be readdressed because it's an important subject. There is an important number of adolescent pregnancies. I cannot define it exactly. We will talk about it, but we cannot do advertising or to disseminate it that much. I don't know if I have answered the question. Thank you very much for your answer. They are similar realities in the region. It makes a lot of sense when we think about the Latin America and the Caribbean and how we articulate and how our reality is so common. Yeni, you have a comment on the chat. Would you like to say it, please? The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, they are very similar realities. I was willing to ask Sabrina if they have had resistance, but she already answered that. She referred to the resistance. So I would like to ask Melcy if the empirical data in her research has been returned to the community. It is important to have all that data. We have made an analysis of the training processes in gender to know the changes in attitude, practice, resistance. So I would like to know the experience they may have had when they got that data and they return into the educational institution, whether they analyze the data or a remaking of the data. Thank you very much, Jenny. Precisely, I was telling you that at that point, we are national teams are about to return to the communities with the data to do the exercise of data interpretation along with the communities. And the beginning of prevention strategies based on the data and the interpretation built with the community actors and the territory. Because as I told you, there's also social organizations of the territory committed in the process. Then on how we will do, I will have to tell you in a coming event, but well, with pleasure, I will tell you. Well, maybe we can share, well, here in El Salvador, we can share what we do. And as Sabrina was saying, she talked about the realities. That was the question, if they had some, seen some reluctancy. 
and you mentioned gender sensitivity working with that. So I believe that among all the involved people involved in this community, we can reinforce because that's a relevant role. Thank you very much. Then I will ask it one more question. May can I make a moment a comment about resistance? Absolutely, yes. We feel there are some resistances that might be very obvious when you refer to this gender subject. With that type of obvious resistance, we have not encountered much. I need to be honest. What we have found is openness by the educational communities, by all the actors to talk about the subject, to put it on the table, to refer to violences they have perceived and identified. That seems interesting because it's like a signal, I would say, it's an advancement or progress signal. It's something that has moved on if we compare it with what used to happen 20 years ago. So I can say we have progressed, we have made progress, but we need to be alert because the study resistances, which are not evident, but probably they may emerge at the moment of thinking of prevention strategies. And why is that? Because there are normalized violence practices, completely normalized. And it might be that at the point you might feel identified, this is why you need, we need to take care of the language and the approach mode and all those details may emerge as resistance. So I would say that it is a day by day task and community by community and actor by actor because something happened, something that happens with the male teachers can happen with the female teachers, same things, girls, boys, adolescents, female and male. So we need to be attentive and pay attention to the resistances that may arise from the playtest of these normalized violent practices. This is it. Thank you very much. Nesty, for your comments. I would like to know if someone else. We are closing this webinar. Okay, we could stay here forever because it's a pretty interesting subject, but we will have a workshop where we'll be divided in working groups and we will deepen here. Anyway, the mic is open in case you want to ask a question or make a comment. If this is not the case, can we turn our cameras because we'll have a picture taken of this event. Please turn your cameras on for a while and Carol will tell us when the pictures will be taken so that we can smile. Please turn your cameras on. Thank you very much. Un segundo. Okay, thanks. Super. Muchas gracias. Gracias a todos y todas por tener Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for turning your cameras on. Thank you very much for your participation in this important space. We'd like to contribute with the dissemination of this gender subject. This webinar, as I told you, is under the framework of our practice communities, and you are invited to be part of it. They are monthly meetings where we deepen on these gender perspectives. Thank you very much to Nestle 
and the other speaker for presenting such an important things. There are several questions that remain pending, but we can work on them during the workshop. Territory diversity, Honduras, Nicaragua, Haiti, working with the Eastern Caribbean is pretty interesting what we see here. And of course, you are invited to continue on for the coming workshop. Any comment, you can write it on the chat box. Thank you very much to everyone. Hasta luego, gusto verles. Ana Marta, un gusto. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. See you later. How was your trip back to home? Everything's fine. Everything's fine. I'm very pleased of having been with you. See you later. Thank you very much, Jenny. Thank you. My regards to everyone for sharing this space. For the next workshop, do we have to stay here? Do we have to stay on? Okay, stay here. Okay, we will all stay here. And then we'll be divided in the rooms depending on the amount of people staying here. We are still under emergency. Dave, tell us how everything is there. There was a, that now is a tropical warning. Classes are being canceled and we are in this emergency state, but still fine. This is why I cannot participate fully. I'm still here though. We'll wait uh, for a couple of minutes to start with the next blog, which is the workshop Maciel was telling you about. In two more minutes, we will kick off. Bueno, vamos a, vamos a comenzar entonces. Eh, nuevamente, bienvenidas y bienvenidos. Esta es la segunda sesión de la Comunidad de Práctica de Perspectiva en Igualdad de Género en la Educación Pública. En Public Education. Let me remind you the general purpose of this community and is to facilitate meeting spaces to share experiences and mobilize, mobilize knowledge about gender equality perspective in public education. We have just had a webinar where two people, two speakers, share their experiences in the territories about initiatives regarding the gender equality perspective. Now we have a space for analysis and debate over the process of design and implementation of an intervention of initiative based on the identification of an educational problem with a gender equality perspective. 
brevemente las indicaciones. Nos vamos the, a the indications are here. We will be divided into rooms. You will be assigned vamos a, tener una a room according to your language. Some people speak Spanish in this space, so there will be a room with interpretation in this different languages. So you will receive an invitation to join the room, and that's where the indications will be given to work. When time is over in the room, we will be back at the main room and we'll have a session close. Let me make a small comment. Finally, due to methodology and technical, finally we won't be divided into rooms. I'm sorry, so we will all stay here. Okay, so we are all here in the room. And we'll start. We will ask you a brief introduction round. Maybe if you don't want to talk, you can use the chat so that we can get to know each other and we know we can identify who we are here because this is the more intimate space for conversation. So please introduce yourself. I will start. I am Fernanda del Posto. Again, I'm the Kix, I'm one of the Kix researchers. It's a pleasure to have you all here. And please continue by opening your mic and introducing yourself. Good morning. My name is Ursula Castillo. I'm from Guatemala. I work for the Puentes project of the World Vision. And we have the component of gender as to one of the cross-sectional access. And we work with adolescents and youngsters. And I'm the coordinator of this cross Axis. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Giovanna. I am part of the regional team here in this project that Nelson just presented. So I'm greeting you all from Brazil. Good morning. I am Jenny Rivas from El Salvador. I am the manager, gen gender manager of the Ministry of Education, and as a main goal, we have implementing this gender equality policy in the educational, national educational system. Good morning. I am Maria Angelica Morales, enamorado, consultant for education, consultant, supporting this implementation process that Guatemala had in the World Alliance for the Education. So I am supporting in all of the aspects related to the strategic approach for the subvention of the Alliance. This includes gender approach in it uh, as one of the main pillars, of course. Hello, I am Nelsi Litarazzo, General Coordinator of CLARE. It is a pleasure for me to be here. You met me, so I had introduced myself before. Good morning. I am Ricardo Lopez from Nicaragua. I work at the Research Center Social. Thank you very much. I am Tanyuska Gutierrez, executive of the Innovation Direction of UNAN Managua in Nicaragua. I am representing Violeta Gago. I am participating here in order to contribute in this relevant topic related to gender equality. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else willing to introduce he or herself? 
If not, we're going to ask for the Q&A session. Well, you know me, but I like to introduce myself. I am Marcel Morales. I am a art teacher, PhD in education, and also a kicks researcher. I am really happy to be here sharing with Fernanda and all of you this, I mean, practice community session. I mean, especially concentrated in gender. Hello, everyone. I keep getting bumped off. I'm Michelle Bradwitt. I'm from Grenada. I am the local focal point for the KICS LEC. My interest is, is inclusive um, practices, inclusive education, thus my interest um, in the gender issues. Um, I am here also um, to learn and, and to share information as well as, as necessary. I'm happy to be part of the presentation today. Thank you, Michelle. Gracias, Michelle. Well, then, so we're going to continue. There are many other people here who are participating from Haiti and some other places, different countries. But, well, if you wish to introduce yourself in the chat box, you can do it. So we're going to continue with this work session. Thank you very much. Thank you for all of the ones who introduced themselves. So this is some space for debate. So what we're going to do is I will ask some questions. And the idea here is that all of you can participate and we're going to take notes. We will take notes in our PowerPoint so we can see, analyze your answers and we can build a knowledge in a collective fashion. So now you can raise your hand in order to participate and I will give you the floor, raise your virtual hand, or if not, you can also write in the chat box and we will process all of the things that you write down over there. You can also, also participate, I mean presenters, speakers can also participate, of course, and we're going to start with this design of an initiative. There is an identification of a problem that is the very best and we want to talk how this process it is like with a gender equality perspective. So we're going to give the floor to us what elements do you think are necessary or are necessary to include in this uh, initiative design of teacher training with a gender equality perspective. We're working on this because we are working with teachers, both men and women. So we're going to start with this question. If someone wants to make some comments, about which elements are necessary to consider, to include when designing a teacher's training with a gender equality perspective. Is there anyone there willing to take the floor? Good morning. I believe that one of the, one of the elements to be considered would be the profile of the teacher the requirements for each of the teachers, it will be interesting to keep that in mind. Which are the requirements which different ministries have in order to hire a teacher, the profile, professional profile, visibility, and experience of the teacher. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Sí. Yes, we can. Okay. Um, I'd like to maybe also think about or make a reflection about the last presentation that was shown about how, how you see the possibility of working beforehand with the institutional teams or medium hierarchies. I mean, I am clear that this teacher promotion that is fundamental, but I don't know how far, or how possible it is to work in a formative way with also, I mean, the decision makers. 
So I'd like to mention that as a reflection, as a, as a thought, uh, as, um, as the, I mean, it would be interesting to see what their experience is. And uh, it will be interesting to see what the situation is like in all of our countries and how this is going to be interpreted and how this is, how this will be implemented in all of the different countries in this uh, field of education. Thank you very much. I would try to mention two important axes from the experience that we have had. One is of course, trying to find the construction of a curriculum, which addresses the multiple inequalities that we're having or we're considering in this gender topic. And we need to deconstruct some myths around the topic. We know that that opens the curriculum. I mean, there's another box being opened, right? Which is also quite big and important. But not only that, that is one line that we need to consider, but there are some other lines that we have learned a lot in our project, which is also moving our own experiences, experiences of teachers, what they have seen in their schools, what they have lived, and therefore we need to reflect and think about the things that they have lived in their own experiences. Thank you. I'd like to add to what Giovanna has said. Well, you know that the project we are at, it is not aimed in teachers training itself. Nonetheless, teachers are the core actors in this type of transformations in the classroom and in the educational communities. And beyond that, of course. So we're clear about that. And I'd like to add to what Giovanna has said, that before being teachers, teachers are persons, right? And that is a factor that we cannot forget. We must not forget in the work when we're working with the educational communities. Teachers, I mean, they are not defined by its function, even though it is really important but they are defined as persons and they have life experiences. And in relation to gender, they leave the gender issues and difficulties in their own lives. They are not away from those problems. They are not away from gender violence. They do not have biographies. I mean, they have lived this gender violence teachers, women, women teachers, female teachers in their lives, they have lived those experiences all as well. So we should not forget that because when we are getting in touch with them, we're also getting in touch with persons. They are teachers, right? And that is something fundamental in a transformation like the one we're seeking for. Thank you, Nelson. Jenny? Thank you. Yes, what you have mentioned is so very important. As a minister, minister of the country, we have a whole process of training for teachers. And always thinking that, I mean, the problems that they may face. I remember, I mean, how long we have been working on this teacher's training, how important it is to have this curriculum innovation, we need it to be centered in methodological elements. They want to change the person first. So we start by the, I mean, they have a hidden curriculum. We assume that they also have some cultural roots, religious roots, which are so embedded. And we need to work this teacher's training with methodologies which do not have or are not colliding. We need to work from all of those cultural backgrounds. But it is important to work with this sensitiveness. We need to create these elements from our cultural experiences. We need to consider and include that many of them do not see or visualize 
the need because of the naturalization of some elements, I mean, this gender balance. So therefore, in order to build or construct a process based in gender, we need to start by curriculum innovation, but also from the person. We need to start from the person, the individual teachers who are living this process will also have this, uh, have, they have faced the problems and they do not know how to solve them. Thank you. Anyone else willing to share or contribute with some ideas? So we have gathered some interesting things over here. Something key over here, it is what you have commented. Different people mentioned the need of considering the person, the subject, I mean, teacher, both men or women, we need to consider and include the experience that they have lived when they are facing this promotion of the promotion of this new approach. It is important because these people have lived some situations all through their lives. And sometimes they have faced different gender violence. So we're working with that. So this is quite interesting. Is there anyone else willing to contribute some more or shall we go to our next question related to implementation? We also need to think when we're training teachers, we need to think that we need to visibilize the family, families. The families of students are also important. So teachers should be aware of this. They sometimes change their uh, mindset and uh, that's why it is important to include families because teachers will also um, need some support from the families thank you this is going to be connected with our next question which is related to implementation so let's go to our next question about challenges of the implementation. Here we have, what challenge may you identify in the implementation of these initiatives that have been shown? Some of them were mentioned already. Nancy mentioned one related to this, I mean, the process they are working at. Maybe we may think in some other initiatives or experiences that you may have, I mean, people here, about projects, programs, or initiatives with gender equality perspective, and what type of challenges we have found or faced when implementing these initiatives. We have identified some of them already. For instance, when you mentioned that working with students means working uh, with family at the same time. And I want to ask you, I mean, I'd like to, let's see if Nelson can go deeper into this concept of gender sensibility that we're work working uh, how can we work with it in the implementation? Anyways, I'm going to open the floor because maybe there's some other elements which are relevant in your opinion, especially at the implementation of these initiatives. Is there anyone else? Good morning. I'm talking from my personal experience as a teacher. In these professional courses and also in the classrooms, we always want to have gender equality and we want to integrate girls, boys and girls. They can join freely to any courses and they can also participate in different activities at the different faculties or university or at a national level. They should also be part, it should be mandatory uh, in all of those courses to have a, a, a woman, a doctor, an engineer. But sometimes we see a challenge, which is that people feel intimidated. Women feel intimidated when they see women getting empowered. 
So that also creates some rejection, but also creates a reaction, which sometimes it is rather negative. And it is intimidating. I understand that a man that has been brought up under the cultural standards of the country, I don't want to talk about chauvinism because that is a, a, a word which is too wide, but we need to consider the cultural background of the person. Sometimes when they see that women are more empowered, that creates intimidation and that may lead to some frictions. So we need to manage that in the classrooms. We need to see how to integrate women in all of the different fields, professional, educational, and social activities. And above all, we need to value that women were still struggling for that, for those positions, for those spaces, hierarchical spaces within an organization. And we're still fighting for, in order to be valued and to be paid equally as a man not to be discriminated because of our condition of being a woman because we're mothers or because we have our menstruation or because we have the menopause or some other conditions which make women vulnerable. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't know if anyone else would like to make some comments. I know that we're talking about, we're, we're speaking Spanish, but the ones who are speaking a different language will remember that we have interpretation available. So if you want to comment, I don't know, Michelle is also experiencing in that in the Caribbean countries. Well we, have, well, we wait for the colleagues. Let me tell you, this is a challenge we have noticed in our processes probably related to the naturalization of certain harmful practices of gender violence. They are, would say, very present practices and present for so long that it makes us look at them as something natural. So there is a great importance of the work from going to the, from this naturalization to an opposed strategy, to an opposed uh, think of considering them unacceptable. That's where we can have a more critic view. This is what we have encountered as a challenge, as an important challenge expressed in the most direct practices of violence, physical, psychological, as well as the role distribution and allocation, because that's uh, naturalized, that's present, and it appears as a challenge when it comes to promoting any type of initiative. What you're saying is very interesting. So my question is, what type of methodologies do you use to make this this naturalization processes when it comes to some discrimination or violence practices or role allocation in the educational spaces. How do you work on that? We are precisely in the building of that strategies, in the design of that strategy, because the work so far has been focused on uh, getting to know, identifying, and construct that along with the methodologies when it comes to the strategies. Because what we don't want is to imagine from outside the communities, we don't want to design any type of strategy. Then we are under that time of trying to build these strategies could make, which could make sense. That's part of the methodology. However, I would like to add to what Joanna is saying, and since we are here, this a uh, very interesting thing, and we saw that at the beginning of the process, and it continues to be interesting because research teams 
were configured in the countries, our national members. And most of the members, most of the members in one of those teams are male, are men. So we have several men in the national teams and that's very interesting. At the beginning, we were like amazed and we wonder, okay, and we'll see what happens here. And then we thought very interesting. And it is interesting because it makes us face a challenge to develop in our own researches even more because among them, there were different sensitivities to gender, sensitivity to this gender matter, because beyond their expertise as the researchers and their excellent level as researchers, we needed them to incorporate the gender approach and the, of course, research approach, participatory, well, action research that was even simpler to implement. So in the training spaces with the national teams, we have uh, worked on the in-person workshop and the accompaniment workshop. And there was one that was uh, conducted with all of them and some of them only with the teams. the identification of uh, violence in their own daily activities, for example, and gender violences in their own daily activities. They work with their emotions, the identification of their emotion, those things that are supposed to be only female, and he, which help us and they have helped us greatly to the teams, to everyone, to develop a more sensitive perception, more acute perception on, how, on where violences are because sometimes they are invisibilized and they, it becomes difficult to see them since they are naturalized. Sometimes patriarchal models are difficult to visualize and then we worked with the connection methodologies with their own body or with our own bodies. And there's several things that are systematized in this methodological guide. And we thought, we thought that some educational units may adapt them because that might be useful, whereas others might not be that useful. And then we would have to rethink of other methodologies. And let me close by saying two things. How could I rephrase this? Well, a good place for referring with a sensitive look or approach to gender matters is the place of the respect for each other, not gender precisely, because what is behind gender subordination is the consideration of the other as someone inferior than you. It's not a responsibility for each individual man is a code of the coexistent model given between men and women, but also between adults and children, for example. So this thing makes men be out of this blaming side which is something useful to work around gender with them. And in the case of women, I could say that we don't start from the idea that due to the uh, women, they had deconstructed the gender matter because we already know it's not like that. 
women, we also reproduce gender patterns and we have naturalized them. We believe that the secret behind this is the way you treat people, people that may change. We can change, all of us, and be better people and live better. So then you remove that blame that sometimes gender produces. And then you start referring to what's substantial and what's substantial is that the other one is equal to you in their difference and they deserve respect. You cannot subordinate that person and you cannot use that person. Probably I was too long. I will be in silence. Thank you very much. Very nice comment, very relevant comment. Some Michelle is saying something there, she has uh, internet issues. And she was saying that uh, denominational schools is spread all over Latin America and the Caribbean. Also, I challenge to approach gender subjects. And what you were mentioning, gender is a word that produces resistance in some spaces. Maybe we should refer to empathy, equity, justice, other concepts that might be around gender and allowed to approach these subjects without feeling this strong resistance produced in some spaces. We are talking about a territory we all know, which is pretty conservative in several scopes and areas with a strong religious logic. Then I believe it is very interesting what you were telling us as an entry point. I don't know if somebody else would like to make a comment. As of 2016, we've been in the process of a non-sexist -sex education training processes, particularly those conservative countries. Fernanda has just mentioned that we all know about it. The biggest challenge we have had is that first, using the gender as a name. Sometimes we need to change that name. Now we are going through a process of uh, reformulation so that men can also feel involved. Because if we say we're going to train gender-based, we got some difficulties and we need to sometimes propose the thing about educating for purposes. And we have seen some resistance at the beginning in male teaching staff because they believe that gender matter is only for women. So we need to incorporate in our collective process, we need to incorporate men to work masculine on the subject of masculinities and make them part of it. We may say that we have evidence that when they reach this training processes and we do not create resistance, we have allies, people are next to us. So the biggest challenge is that from the very beginning, when we start formulating the training process, we should take into account that men must be involved as a fundamental part. We need to see what any other big challenge is time. Sabrina was telling us that. Sabrina was saying that she's very busy in this formation process. So we need to create formation process. If, if they are apart from these training processes, there might be those training processes which do not make the fall, all their labor in the classroom. There might be practical strategies so that the coming day they reach the school or the classroom to be implemented. This is a big challenge, but a great effort and mission to train teaching staff because when we change, when we do this, we change personal lives. And then we transform people in the classroom. Thank you very much. I continue sharing my screen. Well, 
if you are if you see we are including or we are working on a mapping on everything that's been commented so the idea is to make a publication based on this collective practice we are doing now everyone participating here is contributing on this gender matters let's go to the third question that is highly connected to what we were recently talking and i believe that you already had uh, shed some light on it and how could these challenges be faced jenny has mentioned a few things as well as nestle Nelsi, in this idea of using a different word rather than danger, but probably going on the respect side, probably this idea that everyone are somehow, we are all somehow of a victims of a relation structure reproducing gender violence. And I don't know if you would like to address one more topic that you may see as a possible strategy to face these challenges we have already identified these challenges to working in a equality gender perspective by putting the gender matters in order to build strategies and reach equality gender i don't know if you see any point or any strategy to address this would anybody would anybody like to say anything i just want to mention something regarding to nestle comment i feel that gender work is much deeper as you were saying it's not just for men and women it has to do with respect i was thinking of the other centrism the respect we need to have for children just it's a matter of respecting the other person treating them as a subject not an object because gender make us think a lot on in first instance and in many countries this happens that adults we believe we have certain rights over children and that is also reproduced in children believe they have some rights over women and finally, like decon deconstructing this uh, thing about treating the people like object and not subject. And the important behind this is treating ourselves as equals, respecting differences. But I believe that's fundamental, respecting the others and understanding the other person as a subject and value that person under this and this is why i believe this work is very important about gender because it's much broader it has to do with respect in general as you were saying that was my comment let me say something here there's a challenge for us like, I mean, uh, guides, researchers, being in the places, because what we are saying to work around gender is also valid for us. So we need to approach communities from that place, respect for the other, acknowledgement for the other, whether they are diverse, whether they are big, short, old, young, it doesn't matter whether they are authority or not. It's not really important. That's irrelevant for the pedagogic processes. I'm being, being, honest, I'm being very honest. That's irrelevant for the pedagogic processes. Your position, your training, well, Previous training is important because as a knowledge you, uh, you contribute, but it doesn't make you superior to the rest. And it's a challenge for researchers, for technicians, and for teams. It's like saying, okay, we'll do what we are saying we have to do. Not to be opposed to what you're saying, right? Mm -hmm. 
más sin perder mi enfoque, porque tal vez es, aquí sí resalta mi formación. Well, okay, I'm going to say something where my training highlights, and it has to do with the planning, probably on the more methodological side, what you are proposing is very important when it comes to content, for example, then I would like to insist on that part of the involvement in these processes in the design stage, in the implementation of the challenges stage to those decision makers around having their sensitivity, whether they are men or women, in some cases, sadly, we have had to strengthen women to make them be part of these gender processes to change these initiatives. And based on it, the idea of having a good planning and beyond the planning, the necessary allocation of the resources to implement all these challenges. Because we know it is not just through goodwill things are to be achieved, but also with the resources allocation to implement. So part of this thing about sensitivity for in decision makers, the convincement they will have about the importance of uh, allocating resources for this type of process. Then from my logic, I would like to emphasize in that part. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your contribution. Of course, having the necessary resources is absolutely understood to have the implementation of these initiatives. It takes time. We know that. Well, we said that the fact that men probably do not necessarily feel concerned about these gender subjects, it is true that in their training, I believe we have to briefly and quickly explain that is to show how these men are concerned in all behaviors associated to different people. And all this need, need to be an important part for men at the beginning of their training. It is not towards women only and men has a lot of behaviors that should be integrated and they can lead to a negative behavior of toxic masculinity that needs to be identified from the very beginning in order to tell them that they will be able to learn to learn things about themselves, men, of course. Therefore, we need to make men involved from the very beginning with this type of training. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else willing to comment? So I think we have mentioned interesting ideas over here in all of the processes. This idea of when an initiative is designed, which are the aspects to be considered in order to start. What Sabrina also mentioned has to do with that. How thinking, I mean, think how to implement something that creates so much of this cultural shock in some spaces where you are going to work on how to structure, how to, how relations are, are thought to be in a naturalist way. And therefore you need to break all of those thoughts. So Sabrina, I mean, it is important what she mentioned, we need to involve men and their masculinity sometimes I mean, it might be problematic. And what's the benefit of understanding that as well? We're also thinking about masculinity for an accession because this toxic masculinity, it is not only a problem for women and for uh, sexual diversity, but also for men, because that means men need to assume many different roles which have a high demand high negation on uh, what they are as human beings in terms of emotional connections or bonds. 
Later, we saw everything related to which are the problems in the implementation. We have got plenty of ideas on how, how to work all of these elements. In order to work from a perspective which is wide, which is also related to rights, especially in educational places. If there is no more comments, there's no more comments, right? If there's no more comments, I'd like to ask you, before we finish this session, please let's assess this session in a mini questionnaire so we can improve and we can also think in the methodology for our next sessions. Remember, this is thought for five sessions. This is session number two. We want to bring experts in order to work and keep on um, and going deeper into the next topics. And we want to prepare a publication about what, what's been uh, talked about in this space, in these two spaces that we have had already. So I'd like to ask you, you can see my screen, right? Anyways, I will share this in the chat box. This is a questionnaire, which is really brief. It will take you just five minutes to answer. It is in the three languages. So please, I will copy the link and please answer this right now. The first link is in Spanish. So the three links are there in the chat box as well. So please get into that link and we'll give you some five minutes to answer that and we will do the closure of the session. Thank you.